Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 30th, a terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Not today, you and I. We're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much, much more important than that. During this next 16 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. That's right. Go ahead. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den or the YouTube channel, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thirsty Taco Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to La Show. Right now, the only indice in the red is the Dow. So you get the weak, weak, a little bit weak out there, off 55 points, trading out 25, 539. The S&P's up 17. The Nasdaq up 105. That's 1%, a little over 1%. Russell up nine points, about seven tenths of a cent to the upside. Gold is up 19 buckaroonies, 1,800 bucks. Silver's up 53 cents. That's a big move, 3%. Lights we crude up 14 pennies. Natural gas uh, extending the gains that it had yesterday, but I don't believe that it is. Uh, I don't believe. Let me change this here. I don't believe that it is. A, well, I don't know if it is. I got to put up the correct contract. That'll make it a little bit easier. No, I think it needs to close above 176, if I'm not mistaken. We'll take a look at it in order to confirm that uh, bottom. We're talking about natural gas there. Uh, U.S. Treasuries, the 30-year is down 16, 30 seconds. Leading the charge, dollar-wise, the upside is Tesla, up 62 bucks. Amazon, 52. Shopify, 28. Lululemon, 15. To the downside, booking holdings off 18. Boeing's down 12. That's obviously what's putting, uh, uh, putting some of the pressure in the uh, Dow. Spotify off 8. Um, so there's things to look at. Of course, we want to look at what you want to look at. And so what do you want to look at? Well, let's go to this question here from uh, Dennis G. Uh, and Dennis writes in and he wants to take a look. And then we'll go to the markets out here because that will feed in, I think, to the second question. So Dennis says, hey, Steve, I just bought APPS. Well, let's go take a look at APPS out here. That would be uh, Digital Tribune, Inc. And uh, so you just bought it. Okay. Um, just wants uh, comments. What does it do? So here's the beauty of this one. Uh, right now, price is above all profile resistance. So it's got free to free to run, but we've got to go see if there's any kind of topping signals. Don't know if there is, if there isn't, but we're going to go find out. So you're above all profiles out there. So let's go to Stevie's other charts out here. Take a look at any TD counts. How's price moving as it's moving higher? Well, it's moving higher with less relative energy. Now, if this closes above the uh, high from a couple of days ago, two days ago, Dennis, it will have taken out the uh, TD9 count pattern. But price is extended. Um, when I mean extended, it's extending itself with less relative strength right now. That's only a problem if we see a bearish reversal candle. We don't have that yet. Just be watching for that. And then it closed below Stevie's green line. And that would be uh, right now it's priced at 1178. If you saw that, then you should anticipate and expect a pullback to where price had broken out from. And in this case, for APPS on its daily time frame, you're looking at the price level of 991. So you say you just bought it. It's at 1233. I don't know what just means, uh, but uh, that's what the setup would be. So it looks okay. But if you see a bearish reversal candle and close below Stevie's green line again, price 1178, you should prepare for a bit of a storm. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, what do we have here? We don't got we got nada. 
We got Zippo. We got Zilch out here. Now, we can see at the last high back in uh, November, December, you can see that Rhodes momentum indicator. You can see the bearish reversal candle. And then price pulled right back to where it uh, had broken out at 363. So what I want you to just really take from this is the same. So now we're trying to anticipate. We're just anticipating being aware of the uh, of the rumbling storm that could be brewing on the daily time frame out here. But if you get that bearish reversal candle, it's the exact same pattern that we just looked at on the weekly. We saw that pull back to its breakout level of support, 991. And so um, that's what that would be the signal. On a weekly basis, though, right now, I don't have any kind of a topping pattern. If we pull over and take a look at the monthly, wow, extremely stretched, but what a wide-ranging bar this month. They must have cured something out here. Uh, but no topping signal on the uh, monthly. So just watch that uh, daily, Dennis. And uh, Dennis, and best of luck uh, with you on that trade. The next question coming in from uh, Tim from about 5 o'clock this morning, I believe. So we know Tim doesn't sleep. Or maybe he's a West Coaster. It could be international. Excuse me while I take a little swig of uh, H2O. But of course, you don't even know if that's really H2O that Stevie's drinking. Yeah, it might be H2O with a little five-hour energy in it. I'm just kidding. Never have touched that. Five Can you imagine me on a five-hour energy drink? I, you would have to. You would abs. I'm already bounced off the walls. <laughs> you have to put me in a double padded a room out there. Hey, well, let's get to with Tim's question here, Steve. Nobody wants to hear about your, you know, your your psycho double padded walls. Although, although this, this office that we're in, it's beautiful. It, it, it's it's uh, soundproof. Uh, it would make a lot of sense. Nobody really wants to hear me, right? Okay, let's get to Tim's question already. I, I can't read the whole question because it would take. A good while, but in essence, Tim is really asking me to go take a look at the Dow, give him the numbers on the Dow to be paying attention to. So let's go do that because if Tim is asking, somebody else is asking that exact same question. So let's go to our daily indices out here. Give me a second to get to them. Where where, where did I put those? Well, here we go. Okay, so we're going to go take a look at the Dow and specifically give Tim the one number that he's wanting to focus on, and that is the number of 24.781.84. And Tim, I think you had written that in here, didn't you? Did you? I think you might have. Uh, I don't see it on this one. Maybe it was on the first email. Doesn't really matter. The number, the number inside the Dow is 24781. If we get two closes below that, subject to any other profile levels, Tim, that are going to set up on the daily or the weekly time frame for the Dow Equity Future contract outer. So subject to that, that's the signal that the Dow is now getting ready to target those March lows or lower out there. That's what we were paying attention to. Not until then, not until we see a break of support out here, um, will that take place? Now, look, that's the exact same pattern that unfolded back in uh, the 1920s out here. Well, it's unfolded a lot, but I'm just going back to the 1920 time frame. In fact, if you want to see a correlation of uh, where we're at right now today in the Dow versus 1929. Now, when I say see where we're at, that means what Stevie did was when the Dow made its Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, Back in the uh, uh, back in the 1929 uh, time frame out here, I just lined that bottom up with our current bottom, so you can see those two roads meant to indicate. Now I didn't know that that's how it was going to form a, uh, its initial bottom back in 1929, just like we didn't know it was going to be the initial bottom here until it formed in uh, 2020. But now you can see where we're at out here. And even in 1929, price hadn't yet broken through its TD nine count support level of 246.30. Ah, but what it did, price went back to that 1929 low and beyond. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses where you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services and never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before this sale ends Monday, July 6th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's let's finish. Uh, I, I read uh, Tim's uh, question uh, a little bit more thoroughly, and he was referring back to uh, the the segment that I did with Tom on uh, yesterday on Monday. It was yesterday Monday? Yeah, today's Tuesday. Uh, it's hard to get my. I, I, I don't know if you have a hard time figuring out what day of the week it is, but <laughs> Stevie does. Um, in any event, uh, and so what Tim was saying that in order for things to really get rocking and rolling to the downside, we need the Nasdaq, and, and and that is correct. And and I have shared with you, and I have suggested to you that if you're going to go short the market, don't short the Nasdaq. It is too strong. It has let us up. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not going to move lower and we need it to move lower. We do, uh, most certainly. But uh, go with the weak indices out here. Those would be the Dow or the Russell 2000 or even the S&P. But, but, but in order of weakness, it's probably the Russell is number one, then the Dow, then the S&P, and then the uh, NASDAQ out there. Now, in the case of the NASDAQ, and this is what we talked about uh, yesterday. Uh, well, actually, uh, is is this. I'm going to put this chart up here. Now, this is, this is my... Uh, the, the ticker symbol that is out here, this is my synthetic version of the NASDAQ. It's different than using the continuous contract, but allows me to stitch together all these futures contracts out here. It just it, it, It's terrific to use with regard to the market profiles. Now, these market profiles is also using my advanced Doppler tool out here. But that's okay. The numbers will change just slightly. For example, on this tool out here, the NASDAQ is printing at about, or the NQ is about 10.055. Now, that is, by the way, trading right under the top of that uh, box, at uh, which is at 10.065, and the bottom here is 97.55. Now, not to confuse you, but I just want to make sure that I, I am clear on this. If we take a look at the current contract, the September contract, we're going to see the bottom of that profile is 98.31. So we have slightly different numbers out here. That's okay. Look, here's what I want you to get. I want you to get the gist out here. And this is really important. This was the point that I was trying to make to Tom yesterday out here. And that is, even though there was big volume on Friday out here, the way that the markets were moving down, it still is incumbent upon you to be able to identify objectively key levels of support or resistance, because until support is taken out, and this is key. Look, this is one of the most valuable lessons that and it took me a long time to really learn, which was not getting freaked out because something was pulling back, 
right? We're, we're, our minds, we are wired as human beings to avoid pain, to avoid loss. You are wired that way, uh, except unless you're a professional hockey player. And then you enjoy pain. Uh, those folks that are professional hockey players, they'll appreciate that statement out there. But but let's stay, uh, folk, stay focused, Steve-O. Okay. It is just extraordinarily important. So these task market profiles are objective. It's not something that I create out here. And unless price busts through support, topping signals are just, it's a, it's a time to take a break and go test support and really see what the backs of those bulls or buyers are made of. Here's what we've learned inside the NQ that pushed lower in the Sunday evening, never closed below that 97.55 or even even the September contract that we took a look at. And Tim, that is what's needed. And everybody else that's out there two closes below those levels. So 97, just use 97.55 as your number to then suggest that price is going to pull back. Now, let's take a look at the NDX 100 because some of you are saying, hey, Steve, well, first, I don't have your 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 NQ uh, um, chart that you've put together. I don't have the TAS market profiles. Uh, so, so help me out here. All right. I am going to help you out here. Here is the NDX 100. Now, in the NDX 100, you're going to see that it's got both wave number seven, that's letter G out here, as well as a Rhodes momentum indicator top. And, and we've got the uh, confirmed uh, three river evening star pattern. You needed that bearish reversal candle. So the top is in. What does that mean? It means we've got an existing top. That does not necessarily mean the top is in and the markets are gonna crash. It doesn't mean that at all. It just, it could mean inside the NDX 100, all it's going to do is pull back to support. What's its number? Its number is 93.79. 93.79, if the NDX 100 closes below that for two sessions in a row, then what we're looking at is it signaling to you and I that it wants to pull back to its next breakout level. That 93.79 level, that's the breakout level, the most recent breakout level. And the one below that is at 77.63. So that would be a fairly sizable move to the downside in the NDX 100. But first things first, you got to see it close below this breakout level of sport inside the NDX 100. We can go take a look at the other indices. As long as we're here, we should do that. What's the number to be watching inside the S&P 500, the cash indice out here? That number is going to be 29.13. Now, in both the Dow and the NASDAQ and the um, uh, the index 100 and now the S&P 500, you should, you should see that price is trading below Stevie's green line. And they were all green. Green line tells us the price oscillator is above zero. Um, which is a bullish type scenario unless it's falling. Well, because it's below Stevie's green line, we know that it's falling above zero. Now, that could be just a retracement signal. When it turns red, what you don't want to see is here, if we just pull this chart here for the S&P 500, here we can see the road's momentum indicator top way back in February out here, uh, a green line, price closing below Stevie's green line. It eventually changes to red out here. Here's, in essence, our test and rejection of Stevie's red line, or we came very close to it, but nothing more bearish than a falling price oscillator below zero. That's not the condition that we have right now. We could eventually have that condition, but right now, uh, even though we're seeing this bounce, it's just up into Stevie's green line. That is, look at how that has acted as a resistance level. Learn about Stevie's green line. Go sign up for Mastering Probability. Do it for less than 30 days. I don't care uh, if, if that's what you do, but learn this. Add these tools to your uh, trading out there because then you will just use these lines and you will be able to answer the question, where's the market headed? What is it doing out there? Just by using the standard set of tools. Now, does it guarantee that that's where the market is going to head to? No, of course it doesn't. You and I can't not, con we cannot control the next moment. We can only control the decision that we make in the next moment. Well, unless you're going to be a prisoner of your past. And then if you're a prisoner of your past, you are certainly not focused on the present. <laughs> and you can't see the future because you're just simply looking in that rear view mirror. Get rid of that rear view mirror. Okay, let's go take a look at the uh, Russell 2000. What's its rear view mirror look like? Nice bounce today. But what has that done? Well, it's just simply gotten up to Stevie's green line. That's at uh, priced at 1441. This has got your Gartley sell pattern. What's the number the Russell must close below to say, hey, Steve-O, we're headed back to that March area. And that's the 1290.90. That is its most recent breakout level. That is where price needs to close below in order for things to get rocking and rolling. Today is rock and roll day to the uh, downside. If we take a look at the 
the transports out here, the Dow transports, what do we have? We've got a, 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 a Gartley cell pattern. We've got wave number seven, letter G, price below Stevie's green line. Its number is 8015801550. That's the number to be watching there. The semis, we mentioned the semis are on fire, so to speak. I didn't really say on fire, but they were the biggest mover and shaker to the upside. What have they done today? Gotten up, tested Stevie's green line, 1997, uh, 0.22 out there, rejected that. There is a sell the D pattern uh, that is in here of the A to B equals CD pattern. That was confirmed with this little shooting star out here, um, you know, a couple weeks ago. Uh, so the semis, even though a nice day out here, they've got a topping signal in place. Now, the number that they need to close below is 1746.13. Uh, pretty far away from uh, it as we uh, speak. Uh, so, and it's the New York Stock Exchange. We talked about this yesterday. It's the NYSE probably would give us the first clear sell signal. It's number 11, 590, 31. We can see how that's been tested a few times out here and is held. Watch that level, 11, 590, 31. You're right. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So our next question comes in from John in Sarasota. John asks a question, uh, maybe... Uh, he says, what happens if the U.S. dollar is replaced by the Chinese yuan out here? Um, and, uh, you know, now you're, John, I don't know how to, 
I don't know how to answer your question. What happens if the dollar is replaced by the Chinese one? So it basically you're saying the U.S. dollar is no longer the reserve currency. I, I think that's a uh, that's nothing that would take place overnight. I don't see that uh, transpiring anytime uh, soon out here. Uh, I would imagine uh, in today's day and age, now look, it's been a, it's been a while. It's been over a decade since I've been in China and uh, Hong Kong. Um, I used to go there uh, fairly often. Fairly often would be a couple of times a year uh, at least. And um, and I can guarantee, and I don't think that things have changed from the standpoint that uh, in China. So I was in China and, one, and I had to bribe myself out. Uh, got, got into a business dealing with a group of guys that uh, turned out to be not so good. And um, so I snuck out. I, but but I, my point is back then, uh, and, and because of that, and I used to travel with uh, I used to travel with a lot of U.S. cash just to have it for situations like that. I, and traveling around the globe, well, which I have done. I have, don't travel. I don't travel like that any any longer. Uh, but but when you do travel around the world, it really gives you the perspective of the importance and the value of the U.S. dollar. There is not a single country and that I've been everywhere except for Antarctica. Um, every continent except for Antarctica, um, in, in in many countries. And, I, and what I can guarantee you is with the exception of uh, payphones, which I don't think they have payphones anymore, right? Uh, overseas, they probably do still uh, overseas. Um, but there's not a country that you can go to and not use a U.S. dollar. It, it is accepted everywhere. Try using Chinese yuan uh, anywhere uh, right now. So we'll come back to the U.S. dollar. This is a set of charts right here. You can see the uh, U.S. dollar a uh, one rate right now is at uh, seven uh, bucks. You can see a nice little rising uh, trend that is trading into. So we've got the U.S. dollar, uh, you know, eight of the major type currencies to uh, take a look at. But we've got a caller on the line. We've got call ahead seating. So let's go to uh, Gary in uh, Michigan. Gary, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Always a pleasure, Steve, talking to you. Uh, well, thank how you. How are you doing today, fellow Michigander? I'm, do I'm doing well. Doing very well. Thank you. And uh, so AG is what you called about, a part of the silver um, complex. You're still in it, I, I assume, or? Yep, yep, yep. Great, okay. And and uh, we'll come, I, I do want to know what, what, what I can do for you there. I did pull up the silver contract out here. We can see nice day today, big move, um, big percentage. Uh, and it looks like what silver is doing, if you can see my charts here, Gary, looks like silver is running up to a resistance line established by its prior highs out there. No idea whether that will act as resistance or not. Has a little bit further to go. Um, we're taking a look at the uh, September contract out here, and I would say probably headed to about $19, right in that range. You're at eighteen fifty nine right now. So while I've got the silver contracts up on my screen, any questions about the about that? Now, once it breaks past the, uh, if it does break past that nineteen uh, or that breakout point, what's the next level up that it's going to? Sure. So, so in this case here, yeah, so great question. And here's how I would, there, there's a couple different ways that we could approach it. Let's use the first logical way, which is the A to B equals CD pattern out here. So this is our price projection tool. This is like Flow's uh, tool for progressive insurance only. This is our, hey, where is price headed to? So our A point, that's easy to find. That was the uh, low out here in silver on March the 18th. B point, very easy to find. That was the high out here on April 14th, 1650. And then what we're looking for is what's the lowest low in that retracement? I believe it took place on April 21st. It got down to 1480. What was it here? It was uh, four. Yeah. So that was the, that becomes the C point. Now what that does is that gives us a price projection. So the one-to-one -one price projection is 1955. Doesn't mean that price has to stop there, uh, but that would be the one-to-one -one price projection. Above that, the one-to-one point two seven two would be twenty dollars and eighty-four cents. Now I said to you, there's multiple different ways that we can try to come up with price projections out here. Another way that we could do this is to take a look at Fibonacci expansions of the last set of swing points. So in this case here, I'd be using the high from the trading day of 1224 down to that uh, low out here. That was our A point. And that 1.272 expansion gets us to 2109. So you watch the night. So first you're watching about $19. Then it would be 1955. If you can get above 1955, then you're looking at that 2109 area is what I would is is, is would be my take at this stage. Great. Thanks. That was a great benchmark. Okay. 
Now, 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 let's do this here. I'm going to. I just want to do one other thing here. Um, well, maybe I want to. Maybe I don't. Nope, uh, I don't because I don't have. The, sorry, I don't have the, the the chart set up. But you are in AG, and so with regard to uh, First Majestic out here, um, again, remind me. Well, 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 first, what information can I provide you to assist you in that trade? Well, I got rid of some of my um, options. I moved out of them into some other stuff, and uh, I want to move back if this is breaking out, you know, topside, as as uh, Tom would say. Um, you know, if it's broken through resistance, finally, I know it's been trading in the range, so I'll take my lumps and move back in because I, I definitely don't want to miss the long, the long hole up. So here's what we know about AG. And AG, um, probably today or this moment, is not the time to jump back in. And, and the reason is because this is not proven to us that it's going to break topside. Now, you, you could ask the question, well, geez, Louise, Steve, how could you say that? It's not me that's saying that. I'm just uh, the narrating what the chart is saying to us, and that is that First Majestic is trading at 977. The top of its daily profile is 977. Um, uh, you know, it's one thing to buy breakouts, but it would anybody teaching to buy a breakout would also say, no, you're never going to buy anything that's sitting right at resistance. So you need to see a close above that 977 level. Now, if you do, Gary, that's only going to, from a profile perspective, give us a price projection of 1029 because that's the top of its weekly profile. So that's the real resistance area that you are in. Would I sell um, first Majestic? No, you just need to know that you're at resistance. And I would say in this equity, this very moment is not the time to add to it. If you get a close or two closes above that 977, okay. But then you're still dealing with this 1029 area. You know, So you're really up where the sellers are at inside of uh, First Majestic. This does have a um, either a Gartley sell or a sell the D point out here. So it still has that right. topping pattern that is in play. Uh, until those highs get taken out, you have to respect that. Um, on a weekly basis out here for First Majestic, it uh, topped with that TD9 count right at the TD9 count breakdown level of 1088 out here. So First Majestic isn't looking as pretty with regard to what it's doing as the, um, as the actual daily contract for silver. But, um, you know, so if you were going to try to add to a position, where would it be? You know, that might be a good question. And you'd have to say probably the bottom of its uh, bullish structured daily profile or between the ranges of 857 and 877 out there. Those would be the areas. And of course, you'd want to be watching the volume because if volume is picking up, this has got so far three lower high and easily two or three lower lows out there. Okay? Okay, great. Thanks as always. You bet. Good, you bet. Good to speak with you. That was Gary in Michigan. We get back from this break. We're going to go talk about the GDX with Robert in Kansas. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses where you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before this sale ends Monday, July 6th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
from all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Let's go to Overland Park, Kansas, and speak with Robert. Robert, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Great. Thanks, Steve, for taking my call. My I pleasure. I have a position in GDX, but I wondered if you could uh, kind of give an overview of GDX and gold. Uh, I know you just reviewed silver. and uh, Sure. I, uh, just kind of give your overall thoughts. I know gold seems to be making higher highs, and what really would it really take for you to get excited I know kind of recently you've been a little bit bearish about gold, but what would it take you to, um, you know, get excited about gold and turn to bullish? A real big retracement. That would get me so excited. <laughs> and moving lower into maybe like uh, September, uh, October of this year. But let's take a look at the uh, daily time frame uh, chart here for the uh, GDX. Now, in the GDX, when it made its high out here, uh, two different patterns. One was the Rhodes momentum indicator signal, and the other was wave number seven. That is letter G as we take a look at that. And that uh, top took place on the uh, trading days of May uh, 20, May 19th and May uh, 20th. And the following day, price got below Stevie's green line out here. Now, I don't have any kind of a bottoming signal, but price did run into a bullish structured profile that formed back on June the 9th. Today is going to be bar number eight of a TD9 count for the GDX. And price is below that prior high out there. Uh, we know that when the TD9 counts identify tops or bottoms, Robert, that occurs in bars eight, nine, or the bar following bar uh, nine. So that says that the top could be in place here for the GDX today, tomorrow, or the next day, based upon using that TD9 count pattern out here. So kind of like um, uh, with, uh, with, with Gary, you know, would now be the time that you would take a long trade. Well, in his case, it was AG, and we could see the price was sitting right at resistance. Here, knowing that today, tomorrow, or the next day could be a top out here, I know we're coming back to a prior high where there was a previous topping signal. To me, the daily time frame is saying now is not the time to enter the GDX. Would you sell the GDX? Well, I'd always tighten my stop up. But I wouldn't. It's not a. It's 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 not a sell. It's more of a neutral. We're below prior resistance and above uh, support. Support being the top of its daily profile and Stevie's green line. So that's what the daily time frame charter sell, uh, shows us. But uh, before I move off of this, Robert, any questions about what we just looked at on the daily chart? No, no, I'm good. And, and and because you've been a subscriber for for a while, um, you know, would you enter something on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine? No, no. Okay. I wouldn't okay. Uh, do a long position. That's. I was just wondering at what point would it break that resistance and you'd feel good about it the next leg higher? 
Sure, sure. Um, and and I'll, 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 try to, I'll try to see if I can come up with an answer uh, for that. Uh, the weekly time frame chart, let me just go through each chart here for the, for the GDX for you. On the weekly time frame chart, I don't have any kind of a topping pattern or signal out here. So the weekly looks uh, uh, really good. And so from that perspective, the, the so-called breakout would be getting above that prior high, um, negating or not, or the TD9 count pattern either not forming or the market just ignoring it and just simply continuing to move up. That would be a sign of a strong move. On a monthly basis with regard to the GDX, what do we have out here? The only topping signal, price moving higher doing less relative energy. If we saw a monthly bearish reversal candle, that would be a problem, but we don't have that right now. And on a quarterly basis with regard to the GDX, uh, price has made its way back to an old level of support at 36.99. That was its breakout level of support. I don't know if old support, which failed, uh, becomes new resistance or not. But it is it is worth noting that that 36.99 on the monthly basis would be a level that you'd like to see price close above out there. I'm sorry, this is a quarterly chart that we're looking at out here. That's the quarterly chart. I said monthly. Um, so now to answer your question on on gold. Well, any other questions about the GDX? Nope, I covered everything on GDX. Okay, all right. So now let's go take a look at gold. Try to figure out what do we know about gold here. If I take a look at uh, horizontal trading ranges right now, um, I, we can make the case that gold should make a move up to 1829. That's its next weekly horizontal trading range area. Uh, you can see I've got, hor and so those are the horizontal green lines, folks, that we're taking a look at. You'll see some diagonal yellow lines, and I don't know what, I don't know what, what, what is that like chartreuse, that purple color? What would you call that purple color on my screen out here? Um, in any event, we'll go with just purple. Uh, but those are just simply some some trends out here. Uh, so 1829 is is doable, um, you know. I, but I'd have to see how the week ends because this is a weekly chart, and that little yellow diagonal line, rising trend line uh, out there, is really acted as resistance. So it'll be very interesting, Robert, to see where the close on uh, this Friday, well, so this Thursday, uh, ends up for uh, gold. If we take a look at how's gold trading on screens across the uh, globe out here, um, you know, you're, you're running into that little potential resistance uh, level out here, price in US dollars. Uh, in euros, not as strong. In yen, very strong because it's taken out prior highs. So we know that they're buyers, they're not sellers. Yeah, folks, gold priced in euros, they're uh, maybe a little on the fence. And in pounds, you're approaching a prior high out here, which could be resistance. We don't know. So I, I answer the question if we just get total breakouts um, inside of gold, then I could, uh, th then I guess that, that, would, that would then change my, my tune, so to speak. Um, I don't know if that really helped you or not, but but so that, don't, that's so the key takeaway is don't be surprised if GDX continues to move ahead over the next few days, and don't be surprised if gold makes its way up to eighteen twenty. But that should be a point where you should take a serious assessment, and that that could potentially be a top. Yes, we we could. So the the way that the this market could could work work here, the overall markets um, out here, is uh, we, we could see both the, the Dow especially, but the, the, the markets themselves uh, begin their march lower. And this march lower, this march lower could, could easily last into mid-October, so before the election time frame. Um, so that's, that's one real setup possibility out here. Now, typically, the markets on a seasonal basis, Robert, will top around mid-July. So July 19th. So just kind of giving you maybe just the larger picture out here. But ideally, we'd like to see both gold pull back as well as the markets pull back. Because when that next major bottom forms, should it form out here, um, we'll probably see those instruments all going north at the same time. Those instruments being the U.S. dollar, uh, gold and the U.S. stock markets. And the reason why that is likely to take place is because we will see uh, things go to hell in a handbasket overseas or just simply the push for higher rates out there or whatever whatever it might be. And, and then we would see, just as we did from back in 2009, we'd see a, uh, a, a focus in worldwide markets to park their capital in U.S. denominated instruments, bonds, dollars, gold, stock market, okay? No, that's helpful. So what my takeaway is, Potentially a pullback through October, 
and then all everything the treasury yep. bonds gold the entire market might march, march forward if it if the offshore markets go to the south as long as we here in the U.S., you and I and all of the people listening in and everybody else uh, can provide confidence to the world that the U.S. is still the place to be. All right, Robert, heartbreaker. Hey, folks, I've got to run, but we've got a surprise for you. Tommy uh, is going to fill in for this last segment. So have a terrific Tuesday. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Thanks so much for being here. Robert, have a great afternoon. Take care, folks. Markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets. This is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. A treat. Tommy O'Brien filling in for Steve for the final segment of Mass of uh, his program, The Trader's Edge. I was going to say Mastering Probability. If you get a chance, folks, check out Steve's newsletter, Mastering Probability. Check out that Tiger Dollar sale. Get your Tiger Dollars. Sign up for Steve's great newsletter. Uh, and, of course, 30-day money-back guarantee. Checking in on the markets as we round out the 1 o'clock hour. Currently, S&P is trading at about 3,063. Made it to a high of 3,074. We're on a 15-minute bar right now from 345. We're up about five, six points into that market. Jumping around to the NQs. Up 95 points right now, made it above 10,100, currently trading at 10,068. The Dow lagging with Boeing, giving back some of yesterday's gains. The Dow, 25,437 right now, jumping over to Boeing. 
Boeing shares pulling back, giving back. I mean, pretty remarkable, right? You almost give back all of the intraday gains yesterday. Still, we were at about 170 on Friday. You opened Boeing around 180, traded up to 195. We're down almost 6% today on Boeing shares, jumping over to the VIX. The volatility index as this market, we're behaving relatively well at 30.79. We were at 36 yesterday, quite a pullback in that VIX. And how about that gold contract today? Above 1,800 briefly to 1,804, currently trading 17.97 in the price of gold. 1,804, quite a charge. And the crew contract up a bit, just over $40 in a brief moment, currently trading at 39.74. In terms of what else we have happening in the market, I wanted to get over not to this one. What do we have? We have, that's what I wanted to talk about. Jerome Powell, Steve Mnuchin, they're both testifying right now in front of the House. Powell's remarks out there. In terms of the quote, extraordinarily uncertain outlook as the path of the coronavirus remains unclear. Those prepared remarks coming out earlier in the day. Uh, the market behaving pretty well. We got a, a plethora of News coming out later in this week as well. We get FedEx earnings after the bell, uh, I believe, tomorrow. Either way, Thursday morning, what the market is waiting for. Weekly jobless claims coming out at 8.30. Non-farm payrolls for the month of May coming out at 8.30 on Thursday. S&Ps positive by 17. Stay tuned, folks. Dave White coming up live with the Power Trading Hour. I'll be back for the 2 o'clock update. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes.